All right, good morning, Math 1. It's May 6th. Uh, we're going to cover uh, Unit 6 in our re uh, semester review today. I'm going to help you along on some of the stuff and then uh, leave you to it. Um, I can always uh, do more of them the next day if you guys email me or call. Remember, if you have questions, you can email me. You can text or call me at 415-496-6306. Or you can always come to the Zoom meeting. In fact, there's one in a little over an hour. All right, so I'm going to continue with the odds. I will help you out here. Number 14, uh, for the following set of data, create a histogram. For example, the number 45 under the first line means that the bar to the left is the number from 40 to 45. Okay, so first thing you always have to do is put all these in order and in fact it looks like we helped you out these are already in order so how many do we have how many pieces of data do we have from 40 to 45 well it looks like we have three pieces of data from 40 to 45 so we'll just fill that in like that using the data number 14 find the following and then create a box and whisker plot. Ah, oh, boy. Um, hmm. I guess I really can't get out of doing 14 for you, so I guess I'll continue on. All right, so I'll do 14 and 15, and you guys, I'll help you with guiding you through the rest. Okay, 45 to 50. Well, it looks like we've got one there. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this works out. Fifty two. Got one here. One, two, three. Got one, two, three, four. Okay, and then sixty one, two, three, four. And then sixty one, two, three. Okay, so what is the minimum? Well, the minimum is 42. What is the maximum? 83. What's the range? 83 minus 42 is 41. What's the middle term? Okay, the median. Okay, the median, the middle term, so we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, there are 20 pieces of data, so that means the mean are going to be the average of number 10 and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these are the middle two terms. Since there's 20 pieces, 10 and 11 would be the middle two terms. You add these two together and divide by 2. Really, you just got to go 1 plus 3 is 4 divided by 2 is 62. So your median is 62. So now we take, actually 62 is right here. So we take the bottom 10 pieces and we find the average, okay, which is... There's 10 of these guys, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
2 plus 6 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so 54. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 66, and 66. And uh, the percentage in the inner quartile, you know, is 50%. Okay, so our minimum is right here at 42. Our maximum is 81 to 83. Our median is at 41. Is that right? No, that's our range. Sorry, our median is at 62. Our lower quartile is 54. And our third quartile is 66. And now I'm going to get something straight here. Looks like this will do. That's our inner quartile range. Whiskers. And your box and whiskers. Okay. All right. Hopefully, I didn't cut that off. Minimum, maximum, the range is 41, the median is 62. The lower quartile or first quartile here, your upper quartile or third quartile 66, and there's always 50% of your data in the box and whisker. I'm sorry, 50% of your data in the inner quartile range. Okay, you guys should be able to do number 16. I'm going to leave that one for you guys. Here's the information you need. Remember, you might have to add up a couple of these bars. Number 17, from the scatter plot, does the data have a positive, negative, or no correlation? Is the correlation coefficient closer to negative 9, negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.09, 0, or 0 0.09, 0 0.9, or 9? Okay, well, this is a positive, right? It's going up. Positive correlation. Okay, so you know it's positive. Okay, it is very close to positive because it is positive, positive one. Remember, correlation coefficient goes from negative one to positive one, so it's going to be 0 0.9. And use the coordinates of 4 and 40, 8 and 50 to find the equation of the line. Plot the line. All right, so we need two things to write the equation of the line. We need a point, we have two of them, and we need the slope. Okay, point slope form. And we're simply going to use these two points. Remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2. Started right x2, x2 minus x1. So our slope is 50 minus 40 is 10. 8 minus 4 is 4, which means 5 halves. Okay, that's our slope of this line if we use uh, these two points here and I believe here. Okay, now y equals, oops, I'm sorry, no it doesn't, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's our point slope formula. We plug in what we know. Let's just use this point here. So y minus 40 equals 5 halves times x minus 4, which means y minus 40 equals 5 halves x minus 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, divided by 2 is negative 10. Now we simply add 40 to both sides to get y by itself. We get y equals 5 halves x 
plus 30. And there is the equation of our line. Okay. Moving on. All right, you guys are going to have to fill in the rest of this, answer some questions. I'm going to leave that to you. Number 19. All right, sometimes this is up to your guess. State if the graph is uniform, symmetric, or skewed. I would say this is uniform. B, I would say, is skewed. C, I'd say, is hmm, skewed. And I would say D is symmetrical. All right. Let's see here, linear regression, okay, equation for the data is, this is just like the equation we just figured out on number uh, 17, where x is the distance in feet a basketball player is from the basket and y is the number of baskets made. Using the equation, predict how many baskets the player will make from 7 feet and 15 feet. Alright, so how many baskets, y, is he going to make if he shoots from seven feet. I'll let you figure that out. Negative 2.5 times 7 plus 42. That'll be the number of baskets. Okay. All right, I'll do it for you. Negative 2.5. Uh, what is that? That's going to be one... Uh, negative 17.5 plus 42 and let's just do that we get 24.5 now is he going to make half a basket? no, so you probably want to round down to 24 but 24, so he's going to make from about uh, 7 feet he'll make 24 5 shots, so sometimes 24, sometimes 5. Alright, remember you're not done here. You guys need to plug in 15. I'll leave that to you. Alright. Let's see here. In May, the auto company sold cars for 10,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 15,000, 17,000. In June, the auto company sold cars for 10,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 15, 17, and 34. Determine if the statements are true or false. The minimum for both sets of data is the same. True. In May, wait a minute, excuse me here. The minimum for both sets of data is the same. May minimum, 10,000. June minimum, 10,000. So that's true. The maximum for both sets of data is the same. Let's see, 17,000 for May, 34,000 for June, so that's false. The mode for both sets of data is the same. Remember, mode is frequency, the most often, the one that happens most often. I'm gonna leave that to you. The mean for both sets of data is the same. Well, you'd have to add all these up, divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Add all these up and divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Little hint here, drop off the threes. Just make it 10, 12, 12, 12, 15, and 17. Don't worry about the thousands. The median for both sets of data is the same. Well, the median is the middle number. Remember, mode is one that happens most often in each. Mean is the average, add them all up, divide by the number of data pieces. Remember, find the mean of May, find the mean of June. Mean, add up all these, divide by, I believe it was seven. Median's the middle. Okay, so what's the middle number here? What's the middle number here? Remember, if there's an even number, one, two, three, four, five, six, oop, you add up the middle two and divide by two. I'm gonna leave those rest of those for you. Okay, and that's it for today. Good job, guys.